Hello everybody, it's your pal Tintim. Welcome to Let's Play Mace Griffin Bounty Hunter. Mace Griffin is a game about space, aliens, bounty hunting and Henry Rollins. Why do I mention Henry Rollins? Well, because he did the voice work for our hero in this game and we are all going to see what kind of job he did at that. I'm well aware that people usually frown upon longer intros in the first episode, but there are a couple of things that I have to talk about. First off, this game was developed and released for multiple platforms and I am playing the PC version. I also put in some work to acquire an uncensored version of the game. Um, for some reason every version that is not from America is censored really hard. And while we are not looking at some kind of gore festival here, having no blood decals on your enemies makes it pretty hard to tell if you are hitting or actually damaging them. The censored versions also fucked with the cutscenes a bit and I just think that the original versions are better. Now you may wonder why I even bother to bring up that I played the PC version. Well, I'm convinced that this game was mainly developed for consoles. My reason for believing that is that it has some of the problems that you usually see on bad console ports. The most noticeable problems are that it has a very narrow field of view and that the relation between mouse and crosshair movement is just plain weird. I've played a lot of FPS games in my time and I'm also not bad at them but I just had the hardest time to get used to aiming in this game. I can't really put my finger on why it is this way, but it's just plain weird. I really have no better word to describe it. So you're going to see me suck a little bit in the first episodes of the game, but uh, don't worry, I'll get used to it eventually. Another point that I want to bring up beforehand is the soundtrack and the audio mix of the game in general. Um, the internal audio mix is terrible and you can't really control it. There are only two settings, one for the soundtrack and the other for everything else. This means that cutscene dialogue will often be kind of quiet and some sounds will spike pretty hard. I'm doing my best to edit around this, but there are occasions where I really can't do nothing about it. So you may want to be careful if you're listening with headphones, just saying. Um, the original soundtrack isn't bad or anything like that, but it's pretty much standard orchestral stuff that you have heard a million times before. So I decided to turn it off completely and replace it by music of my own choice. I settled on some sweet synthy music because I think beeps and boops just fit space and future games in general. If you do not enjoy music like this then I'm sorry and this may not be the LP for you. If you do however like synthy music then you're in for a treat because I will mostly use unknown or smaller artists so you maybe find something new that you will like. And for your convenience, I will always credit all the songs that I used at the end of the episode. Well, that's it I guess. Let's get to it. It is the year 2412. Humans have terraformed much of the solar system. In their continuing search for colonies and resources, mankind discover the Velikan and Jaldari, intelligent alien races who are native to the nearby Della and Hasali systems. In return for land rights, the newly discovered aliens are introduced to the trappings of human civilization. 200 years later, the three races have become integrated, trading and working side by side. With the human systems now fully colonized, both business and government broaden their horizons, and virgin territory is sought. The Tannen Corporation launches a series of probes, and within months, the Wagner system is discovered. A huge chain of planetoids whose solar orbits make them perfect for colonization. The big companies stampede into the new territory, squabbling over land and mining rights, leaving the smuggling cartels and pirate clans to fight for the To counter crime, the Enforcer Police are established. Sponsored by the major corporations to safeguard their interests, the Enforcers must also protect law-abiding settlers and traders. This stipulation comes from the High Senate government, who in turn create an elite military corps. Their job is to monitor these heroes and tackle the more hazardous criminal problem. These elite soldiers are called Rangers. I'm telling you, in a couple of years, all the mining and industry is going to be under corporate control. The days of small business are over, and good riddance to it. We've got bigger fish to fry than bandits bothering settlers. I heard that some player called Conrad Reinhold has even got members of the Senate on his payroll. Oh, I'd like to rip that goon another. This is Control to Ranger Flight 13. We have a potential Code 4 situation incoming. Take up a holding pattern and await further directives. Copy, Control. We'll take care of it. 
Greer, I need you back here. We may have a situation on our hands. Griffin, you take the controls. I'm on it. Griffin, what do we got? I'm picking up three crafts straight ahead. We got a Talon cargo carrier, the Fortitude, and docked with it as a shuttle. The third ship I can't get an ID on. It looks like nothing I've seen before. I'll call for backup. Oh, damn! We lost our comms link with control. We're being jammed! Griffin, find us a docking point. Docking procedure completed. Okay, team, you know the drill. Let's go. You too, Griffin. Airlock. Griffin, you find the control room and open it up. We'll move on ahead. And now we are in the game. As you can see, we have a little digital hut on the upper left for our health and shield energy. It will even be affected by a frantic movement to create the illusion of being a digital overlay or something like that. This is your basic melee weapon, the stun rod. It has a light and a heavy attack, but it's basically a piece of shit and I hope that I will never have to use it. And this is our standard space assault rifle, with a minigun barrel. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty awesome, but this weapon has some downsides that I'm going to talk about in a bit. Bye guys, please don't die. Ah, uh, who am I kidding? They will probably die. Case in point. And right away we pick up a new weapon, the pistol, but I am going to talk about it in a moment. This guy is scripted to die and you basically do not have to worry about civilians for the most part and I am probably going to kill a fair number of them, mostly on accident. Now let's talk about our current weapons a bit. My main problem with the assault rifle is that it's pretty inaccurate by default and will get even less accurate the faster you spin the barrel. And at the height of the spin you will not hit anything without rubbing your face directly against it. While it's fair to apply some kind of downside to your basic weapon, this is also your workhorse in this game. So yeah, we will have ample time to get annoyed by how inaccurate this gun can be at times. Now let's talk about the pistol. It is a pinpoint accurate in single shot mode and also has a burst fire mode. The burst fire will basically eat away your magazine but is very handy for close quarter encounters. The interesting thing about the pistol is that it gets affected by how your character is holding it. When he's holding it with two hands like here it will have a much higher rate of fire. But as soon as you move your character will hold the gun with only one hand reducing your rate of fire by a fair amount. The problem I have with that is that you cannot tell your character to hold the gun with both hands, you have to stand around for a second or two until he does it automatically, or you have to waste a one-handed shot as soon as you're stationary. So that's why I think that it's kind of a tacked-on feature that doesn't really have much of an impact, to be honest. Well, that's enough weapon chat for the moment. Let's go and kill shit. There will be a fair amount of battle chatter and apparently all the human mercs and pirates come from space Russia. I got tricked by a corpse here. But I wasn't entirely wrong as there was an enemy lurking behind the crate. Explosive barrels are ridiculous in this game and you really don't want to be anywhere near them when they go off. And right here you can see an example of the accuracy problems that your assault rifle has. You can kinda work against it by burst firing it, but I have to say that it's pretty annoying and boring to play this way. 
when you will see a crossfade coming out of the blue, you can pretty much count on me just cutting out uh, looking for supplies. This game is linear and there are no secrets or interesting things to find off the beaten path, so I'm just going to edit it out. In general I will mention parts where I died, because there are a few sections in this game which are quite difficult even on the normal difficulty that I'm playing on. I need help here! And this is something that the game likes to do. It will trap you in a cutscene only to release you right in front of enemies. For the most part it's not too troublesome, but there are a few occasions where it's really annoying. And here we come up on something cool, rifle grenades. The secondary function for the assault rifle is a grenade launcher. Rifle grenades are really powerful and cool, but they're also pretty rare, so you want to be a bit careful with using them. The upcoming room is going to be staffed by a bunch of enemies, so I have to camp it a bit. The assault rifle really won't do a good job at this range, so let's see if we can rush this room. No, 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 no. <laughs> of course, uh, when the enemy is using the assault rifle, it will have much less accuracy problems than you will have. Okay, 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 I get it, I get it. As you can maybe guess, there is a little delay before your shield will recharge and each additional hit will also reset the timer back to zero. Oh fuck! <laughs> yep, that was an enemy using a rifle grenade and it would have killed me instantly if I would have been a little bit closer. Okay, fuck it, I'm tired of this, let's Rambo this shit. As I said in the intro, I was still getting used to the weird aiming in this game and I'm going to share my thoughts about why the aiming is weird in this red. I have a suspicion, but it would be a bit much to explain this in a video. And now the game wants to educate us about two new things, the objective radar and jumping. The objective radar is pretty handy, but you can't bring it up at will and will only get it if the game wants to give it to you. This is kind of annoying, as there are a few sections in the game where having a radar would save you some trouble and time. So let's talk about the jumping. First off, this game has a real hard on for jumping sections and puzzles and you will constantly have to do that. This is a problem because jumping in this game is pretty floaty and it's hard to judge your distance. The narrow field of view also plays a part in that. The other weird thing with jumping is that the collision detection in this game is also less than stellar. For the moment we have this uh, simple three box jump to make here, so let's see what we can do. Be honest, would you have guessed that I was already at the back end of the crate? I was under the impression that I was at the front end and wanted to take a step back for a running leap, but nope. Well, let's try this again. Okay, this looks good. And I'm wedged in between the platform and the box. Okay, saved it. Now come on, jump up onto the platform. No, don't rub against it. You can do it, just jump over it, come on. Yeah, I was a bit annoyed at this point. The thing about jumping up onto objects or platforms in this game is that you will have to keep a minimum distance from the object to jump on top of it, otherwise you will just endlessly rub your face against it and will get nowhere. And of course, no FPS game would be complete without crawling in vents. Aha, since this is a game in space, we will obviously be meeting aliens. The alien race we are about to meet are the Velikians. They are almost as common as humans are in this universe, but have the added trait of being space racists. <laughs> yeah, they will often refer to humans as monkeys. This part is also dangerous because the fuckers use shotguns right next to an explosive barrel. And speaking of the shotgun, here we have one. Aside from the normal single shot function, you can also load up to 4 shells into the chamber and fire them off in one big burst. 
That sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? And yes, for the most part the shotgun is a cool weapon, but it also performs kind of dodgy. Um, it's hard for me to explain why without a good example, but there will be one later in this video. Here you can see that the shotgun will sometimes knock down enemies. This can actually fool you into thinking that they are dead. And you also can see that the spread is awful and kind of random, so yeah, using this thing at a distance is not a good idea. Pointless cutscene for no real reason, but yeah, okay, whatever. While the Velikins are pretty similar to humans, their AI is a little bit better. Um, they will often make better use of cover and also will try to ambush you around corners and things like that. And right here we come up on the best example for why I'm calling the shotgun a dodgy weapon. Pay attention to the guy in the middle. Knocked him down once. And twice. All good things come in threes and he's still fucking alive. Yeah, these are the moments where I really hate the shotgun. Die already! I cannot tell you exactly why it sometimes performs like this, but I think it's related to the random spread pattern. One thing that I want to say about the weapons in this game in general is that each of them has some kind of flaw to it. In itself that isn't really a problem because game design just works this way. You can't just give the player a BFG and be done with it. There has to be some kind of progression, pros and cons, all that jive. But for some reason the downsides of the weapons in this game are really noticeable to the point where I honestly don't enjoy using most of them and will usually stick to a select number of guns that just get the job done. I'm still going to show off all of the guns and the game will also force me to use some of the guns that I don't like, but uh, you can look forward to some repetition when it comes to gunplay. <laughs> The level transitions in this game are often kind of random and surprisingly out of the blue. But here we meet a new enemy, the Human Commando. These fuckers use pistols and grenades while also having a medium energy shield and the best way to deal with them is a rifle grenade into the face. Their AI is also a bit better than the normal human AI, they will dodge around more, try to use cover or ambush you. But the most annoying thing that they can do is throw grenades at you with pinpoint accuracy from quite a distance. Shielded enemies will become more common as the game progresses and some of them can be quite a pain if you only have bullets to deal with them. Enemy shields have three stages, a weak blue shield, the medium red shield and a strong greenish blue shield that you can see on heavy or boss type enemies. And this beeping sound will follow you in your nightmares because this signifies that somebody has thrown a grenade at you, so get the fuck out. As you can see the medium shield will already soak up a bunch of bullets before the enemy will go down, so I think you can imagine how tough heavy shields can turn out to be. Whoops, there's still a commando poking around behind me. Excuse me for a moment while I go off and kill him. What? Who's there? This is a good point for me to explain that this game has no directional audio and it actually tricked me there. The sound clip made it seem like the enemy was like directly next to our ear, but in fact he will be in the next room. Since the audio isn't directional, this can very well confuse you and there will be another instance in this video where I will get fooled by it. Also I was kind of not paying attention to my radar, so uh, sorry for that. <laughs> Despite my gripes with the shotgun, there's one thing that it's really, really good at. Destroying shielded enemies in one big blow. <laughs> Again, I didn't pay attention to my radar and was looking for the right button. And also got stuck on the chair. <laughs> Now it's time for some plot. Richter, I've opened up the airlock. Good work. You come across anything? Various hostiles. One thing's for sure, these aren't our usual perks. What about you? Nothing yet. Okay, you get back to the ship. 
ship and prep us for takeoff. What a surprise, shit is fuck and we have to get out. But the following section will be pretty entertaining because there's a lot of cool combat on the way. And again, I get tricked by the audio here. Thought that the enemy was to my left? Nope. There is something very visceral and rewarding about firing the assault rifle with the maximum spin, but again, uh, the accuracy drops down to almost zero. Just waiting for my shield to recharge. Whoops! Kill <laughs> the civilian. And this one is also scripted to die, believe me, I just sped up the process. <laughs> huh, seems like someone was getting away. you really want to destroy those barrels before moving on, believe me, it will save you the trouble of reloading. This section is one of the first real challenges in this game because it has a lot of enemies, some hazards and one or two of the enemies also carry rifle grenades. <laughs> that was a close one. <laughs> uh, remember, rifle grenades will also pretty much kill you in one hit. I really should have paid more attention to my objective marker. I mean seriously, what, it's like the third time now? <laughs> Please let me in game, come on, don't be a dick. Huh, a big open room, mostly empty. I bet there is some kind of ambush lurking here. Yep, there they are, and explosive barrels, pretty dangerous. Kind of hard to spot where the second guy is. He's actually at the far end of the room. And he's a wily little bugger. <laughs> bugger tricked me. This room also has something of interest. One of our dead ranger buddies. And now I'm stuck in some kind of hole. <laughs> Come on, please let me out. Here we come up on kind of a dick move. There is a human commando hidden back there in the shadows and since he wears black you can't see him. And he's a fucking grenade sniper. <laughs> 
I haven't talked about grenades until now because I actually don't really like to use them. The problem is that they have a fixed throwing range and will also bounce after hitting the ground. They are pretty awkward and annoying to use, so I only will whip them out if I have to. They also have a secondary function, but we can later see it in the video. There is a little falling bridge scare here, but don't worry if you're not fast enough on the jump button. If you fall down back into the room, you can just scale a tower of boxes at the side of this platform. More fun with collision, yay! This is another pretty dangerous section because of the environmental hazard before you step into it, but I have to say that moments like these are why I like combat in this game. It's usually very frantic and a bit brutal on the player, but yeah, I like it that way. And there is also another dead ranger buddy in this room, but I forgot to take a good look at him. Sorry. <laughs> He's just rolling about. And here we will see the secondary function of the grenade, being a flashbang. One thing that is interesting about the flashbang is that it will only work on living enemies. Robots and cyborgs will not be affected by it. We are pretty much at the end of the level, but there is one last ambush left. And now we are done and can finally escape before everything around us explodes. See you next time! Despite your claims of wormholes and alien vessels, the charges against you still stand. The fact remains that you were ordered to hold your position and failed to do so. Abandoning your post resulted in the loss of your unit. It is therefore my duty to pass the following judgment. Mace Griffin, the High Council finds you guilty as charged. The sentence is ten years. The place of incarceration will be the Kassath Penal Colony. Haven't you clowns listened to a word I said? It was a setup. They were waiting for us. You will accept the Council's decision. Take him away.